Now in this lesson, we're going to learn about speed of reaction. And the very first thing that we need to learn is what is the definition of speed of reaction? So what exactly does it mean when we say that a reaction is very fast or when a reaction is very slow? In a chemical reaction, reactants are being converted into products. Hence, speed of a reaction can be defined either in terms of how fast the reactants are being consumed or how fast the products are being formed. In a more scientific manner, speed of reaction can be defined either by the amount of reactants used up per unit time or the amount of products formed per unit time. And for those of you who prefer equations, speed of reaction is therefore equals to the amount of reactants used up divided by the time taken or the amount of products formed divided by the time taken. Now that we have learned the definition of speed of reaction, we're going to look at how we can actually measure speed of reaction in the lab. Now if you are ever asked to investigate the speed of reaction in the lab, 90% of the time it will involve a reaction that produces a gas. Now why is that so is because when a gas is being produced, we can easily monitor the speed of reaction by measuring the volume of gas produced with time. So here I've shown you an equation of a reaction that produces a gas. It's your acid plus metal gives you salt and hydrogen gas. So in order to monitor the speed of this reaction, we can actually use a setup like this. We have a conical flask, which contains our hydrochloric acid. And then we have our magnesium metal in there. And the mouth of the conical flask is stoppered with a stopper, which is connected to a delivery tube, which then is connected to a gas fringe. That will allow us to measure the volume of gas at any point in time. Now the last piece of equipment that we need for this experiment is of course the instrument that measures time which is our stopwatch now with an experimental setup like this we can actually measure the volume of gas produced over different time intervals and with that we can actually plot a graph of volume of gas versus time when we plot a graph of volume of gas versus time you will end up with a graph that looks like this alright so how do we interpret this graph now bearing in mind the definition of speed of reaction which is the amount of product form per unit time so the speed of reaction in graphical sense is represented by the gradient to the tangent at any point in time all right so i'm going to bring your attention to three particular parts of the reaction at the very beginning in the middle of the reaction and at the end of the reaction so we can see that at the start of the reaction the gradient is the steepest all right which means that the rate of reaction is the highest and then in the middle it decreases until it reaches zero at the end and when it reaches zero it means that the speed of reaction is zero it also means that the reaction has stopped all right so a few things to take note first thing the gradient of the tangent at t equals to zero is given a special name it's called your initial rate now this is important when we are going to compare the rate of reactions when we change certain factors that can affect it 
Alright, so it's very important now to know that the gradient at the start of the reaction is called the initial rate. Right, the other thing to take note is when the gradient becomes zero, this means that the reaction has stopped at this particular time and this is the volume V represents the maximum amount of hydrogen gas that will be produced in this reaction. There's another setup that we can use to measure the speed of reaction of reactions that produces gas. So the other setup looks something like this. We also have a conical flask and then we have, we have our acid and our metal and this time the mouth at the mouth of the conical flask we have a ball of cotton wool. All right, and then this entire setup is placed on an electronic balance. All right, and then of course we have our stopwatch. Now the fact that we are using an electronic balance in this uh, particular experimental setup already hints to to you that we are monitoring the change in mass of your reactants per unit time. All right. So in this case, why would the mass of the reactants change? Because a gas is being produced. And if you look at the experimental setup, it is not closed. What do I mean by that? Meaning when the gas is produced, it can actually escape into the air. And when the gas escapes into the air, the Re remaining mass will decrease with time. All right, so the cotton wool is actually there to allow any gases to escape. However, should there be any splashes all right, of solutions, the cotton wool will be able to capture the solutions and prevent it from contributing to any mass loss. With the experimental setup shown, we will able will be able to plot a graph of mass versus time, and it will look something like this. Mass Now the same rules will apply. In this case, we are looking at the change in reactants per unit time. And since reactants are getting lesser and lesser, you will notice that the gradient is now negative. All right. Same thing, we'll look at three parts of the reaction at the very beginning, in the middle, and at the end of it. So we looking at the gradients at these three points, we can see that it is the same. At the start of the reaction, the gradient is the steepest, so the speed of reaction is the highest. Right, it will decrease as the reaction proceeds before it reaches zero, which means the reaction has stopped at this particular time. Now, again, I would like to point out that the gradient to the tangent at the start of the reaction is called the initial rate. All right, and this initial rate, once again, is going to be very important when we look when we compare the different graphs um, from different experiments involving a change of a certain factor. So we have looked at the two things. We have looked at the definition of speed of reaction and then we have looked at how we can actually determine the speed of a reaction um, using experimental methods in the lab.